Things don't always go according to plan. Things can sometimes get wrecked. I may take things like this a little too far. Kind of just that little ugly spot on the back of your shirt you just decide isn't there. Casual Gamer. I'm Josh Currier. I'm here with the Frag. How's it going? We got Danielle. We have Aaron. And we have DM Jason. Oh. All right. So we are actually going to sit down and finally get a chance to play D&D. You guys have probably already watched our character generation. Now we're going to see how these guys interact in the environment. So this should go well. Take it away, Jason. <laughs> okay. Um, you'll die. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. we'll, all we'll, right. we'll just start there. You got your backup characters, right? <laughs> Uh, okay, maybe. <laughs> so, setting wise, I'm just going to keep today a little bit generic. Okay. So, very kind of generic high fantasy. You could drop this kind of a session in any particular campaign setting. Um, no spoilers for how you would do that. Um, <laughs> but, really, really kind of generic. So, where you guys are going to be coming in is in a small mining town on the outskirts of a fallen kingdom, okay? And this is the kingdom of Kor. So what caused the kingdom of Kor to fall? Well, two things. One, lack of a king. A hundred years ago, the king's heir mysteriously vanished. That's bad. This results in a war of succession, very bloody, very brutal, lots of people die, lots of heroes are forged. It's not good for the kingdom overall. Now the kingdom could have recovered from that, um, having finally settled a lengthy war of succession, but no, they don't. And the reason they don't is because from underneath the capital city bursts Igjarjuk. An what? Igjarjuk. A nasty, angry, mean, surly, white dragon. Okay. <laughs> Felt like dumb for a second, like, should I know what a jigga is? <laughs> it sounds <laughs> nice. You guys all brought your asbestos underwear, right? <laughs> <laughs> and to my other bag. <laughs> and Georgic lays waste to this kingdom. Hundreds and thousands of people die. Um, he is revered as a near deity by the local cobalt population, which thrives under the benevolent rule of this dragon uh, deity, if you will. Um, and what humanity has clung to this mountain valley in this, this region uh, is eking out a very meager existence. In general, they're unable to leave there are kobolds everywhere. That's dangerous. It's safer to huddle up in the few remaining walled cities or, or small towns. Um, but Igjarjuk demands tribute to be allowed to live. So the entire region has sort of annual rituals that involve offerings of a cart full of silver ore or whatever other trinkets and valuables they can offer up to appease the dragon who has used the former capital city and ruin thereof as his personal demence and lair. Um, in general, these people need heroes. And unfortunately, they don't have many of them. Uh, heroes have been coming for years to try and slay the evil dragon. 
Uh, there are bones of the fallen scattered everywhere from people who have tried and failed. No one is doing well in this region, and most of the rest of the world has put a Here There Be Dragons label on the map <laughs> and turned their back on it. Very few heroes are still willing to throw themselves at it and try, uh, and the locals have largely dug in to, again, that walled sort of city mentality uh, in their small towns and said, we're going to turtle up, we're going to keep our family safe, keep our people safe, keep our head down, and try and eke out enough of a tribute to keep the dragon from devouring our children. So this is the place that you guys are coming into as foreigners. So other heroes have already tried and failed. And you expected us to take on this dragon at first level. Of course not. <laughs> I didn't say that the story was you guys taking on the great dragon Igjarjuk. Uh, oh, we're taking on the town. Oh, we did this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're going to have your own story in all of this, but this is the backdrop to be aware of. It's a very cold, mountainous region. Um, think of it as being somewhat Scandinavian uh, in that extreme northern latitude sense. Um, it's a nice, cozy place that rarely gets above 70 degrees in the summer where a white dragon can lounge about and be very, very comfortable in the relative cold. Um, the spring growing season and summer growing season is short. Winter hangs on like no one's business. And time of year wise, you guys are in that early, early part of spring where the calendar technically says this is spring and the weather hasn't really figured that out yet. <laughs> okay, so it's generally a bit cold, but things are starting to melt. Streams are starting to flow. Um, the ground is starting to thaw enough to actually be somewhat workable. Um, nights are still bitter cold, uh, and people are still huddled close to their fires. Okay. 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 Hart thinks he should put clothing on. <laughs> what are the demographics of the region, like as far as race goes? It is a Bring very... up race already? She's so she... privileged. <laughs> <laughs> Any tieflings nearby? <laughs> like a hovel of them? <laughs> Whole cities, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> anymore. <laughs> it's, it's a very, very homogenous human um, region. There's not a lot of diversity in the region. Um, they have local legends and lore of visiting dwarven miners and artisans uh, who are revered, uh, but has anybody ever actually seen a dwarf, met a dwarf, known a dwarf? Um, not so much. Um, they've had experience in contact with outsiders. Um, elvish heroes have passed through on their way to try and kill the dragon and then been slain. Um, they're elvish heroes, so they have left some half-elven bastards behind. Um, <laughs> you, hey, hey, I'm not from this town. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing in this town, but I'm not from this town. There are some areas in the region where orcs are a problem, and they too have left some half-orc bastards behind. Um, in that the way is you. <laughs> <laughs> that probably is me. <laughs> in the way that, that orcs are a problem to the region in general, but... The kobolds are a bigger threat to the region than the orcs. The orcs are really more of a southern problem and not as frequently encountered. Um, Should I speak like a Texan for this? <laughs> please don't. Please, please don't. You can speak like you're French. Oh, yeah. That would be south of Scandinavia. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather you speak Texan. Oh, to, be fair, <laughs> to be fair, Texas is south of Scandinavia. Just <laughs> okay. Any other any other questions that you guys have going into this? Will you remind me of the name of the town? The town is Berlin. All right. Well, before we get too far, why don't we all take an opportunity for our listeners to go ahead and uh, tell our character's name and give like a brief description of what they look like? Sure. 
Start us out, Wrecker. All right. So my name is Wrecker. I'm a half-elf sorcerer. Um, I've got long blonde hair and it's shaved on one side. About, uh, what was it, my 5'8", so. When you say shaved on one side, are we talking like fifth element shaved on one side? Like it's just bald here and then like long this yeah, side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Performers. All right. <laughs> <You're> Magic. <done. laughs> <laughs> Long silver hair, dark tan skin, and silver eyes. I'm about five foot six, and I'm wearing studded leather armor. Although there's probably several layers on top of that at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> How do you pronounce your name again? Ella Ira. I'm gonna call you Ellen. I, I figured that would probably end up being <laughs> short and sweet. I like Ellen. Can I call you Ellen? I'm gonna tase you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. All right. First tase threat. We're not even ten minutes in. <laughs> is that a shock? I'm shocked it didn't happen before the DM spoke. Shocked. Ouch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Your turn, Horde. Well, as he said, my character's name is Horde. He's a seven-ish foot tall, big green half orc. He's got yellow eyes and he's bald. That's it. And yeah. not wearing clothes. <laughs> and he's no, very I found out I'm not. I wrote in commoner's clothes, but it's under the equipment area, so it's in my backpack. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, you have a pet named what? I have a pet mouse named Tickles. Don't look at the camera like that when you say it. Tickles. <laughs> Does anybody have the medicine skill? Because we're going to need to treat him for frostbite. <laughs> no. <laughs> nope, and I'm not treating any part of him. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I'll hug up to you. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna nuzzle. Uh, my character is Avier. He's the only human in the party, actually. Uh, he's five foot ten, about one hundred and fifty, so decently slim build. Half human. Uh, he's got brunette hair, kind of white skin, very light blue eyes. Uh, the thing about Avier is that he is always standing really tall, and he always tends to walk near the front of a crowd or in the front of a group, uh, despite the fact that the sorcerer is probably more adept at being likable. So <laughs> what you're like saying it. is when it comes to marching order, he's the one who takes trap damage because he's in yep. front of the group. That's correct. That is a <laughs> terrible plan. I am all for I can't this. help it. <laughs> I'm all as for it. As, as long as I'm not in front, that's all that matters to me. All right. So now we've entered our mining town. Okay. So we're going to begin with you guys where every generic fantasy adventure starts. Okay. Where are we? The tavern. <laughs> Getting hammered. This episode was brought to you by Pepsi. <laughs> um, that's, a, that's in our tavern? Or? I don't know. Uh, apparently. Your character's drinking soda in the tavern? He's an entertainer. I soda was invented yet. <laughs> so. <laughs> there was magic, though. You guys are <laughs> in the local tavern where... Many of the locals are hunkered over their tables as close to the fire as they can sit and wolfing down bowls of hot stew. The meat is best left to not be described, although there's a good chance it might be goat. Um, as long as it's not strange meat. Don't meat. ask. Okay. <laughs> What's in the stew? Don't ask. All right. <laughs> a tavern again, Wrecker? I'm starting to think you have a problem. <sighs> What's the problem with the tavern? It's nice. Why are we always here? It seems like every time I go somewhere, this is where you bring me. <sighs> fine, fine. Give me a bowl of soup or something. I'll go find somewhere to sit. Soup. Get it your damn self. When <sighs> I, go sit, I go to the tavern, the, the barkeep, and I start making some general chit-chat and getting some drinks. I'm going to roll my eyes at whatever patron looked up at him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you guys are served warm bowls of stew, hot steaming loaves of bread, and ale that is stout enough to be chewy. Excuse me, do you have wine at all? Anything? Elven wine? Any vintage brand? Mead. <sighs> Can I have water, please? <laughs> You'll drink water in a tavern? There's a horse trot outside. Probably be cleaner than in here. I would love for you to go find that out. <laughs> Children. Oh, I'm sorry. How's this do? 
Well, the root vegetables are old and shriveled, and the meat is tough and chewy, um, but it's edible. Mm, just like mom used to make. Let's go up north, you shag. Oh, there's going to be lots of adventure up here. This is an adventure. It's just starting. You this can't is have... delightful. Oh, every small town has some problems. Did you not see that sign? There be dragons. And when there's a dragon, there's a horde. Not yes. that one. <laughs> yes. You don't want to take treasure from a dragon. Why not? It sounds like fun. Why do I let you convince me on these? Because I am just so lovable. Ugh. Your ideas of fun and mine severely differ. I didn't see you coming up with ideas. I did come up with ideas. I wanted to go south. Where there yeah, might be larger cities. And maybe we wouldn't have to eat this swill. Yeah. Last time we let you make a decision, look, let's go south or west or whatever it was. Oh, look, there's some tea things. Let's get kicked out of the town because you punched somebody. Or tased them. It's not my fault that they provoked me. They said hello! They're evil. That one did scowl. How can you that throw it That was a flirtatious look. That was not a scowl. That was a, how you doing? And next thing you know, he gets tased and we're kicked out of town. They were clearly up to no good. No, I'm up to no good. How you doing? I'm about I'm to move over here. <laughs> <laughs> and I pick up and I move on the other side of the table. <laughs> oh, don't be jealous. I'm choosing a different table. <laughs> so I get up and see if I can find another table. <laughs> Before you get up, <laughs> a small, runty boy between 10 and 13 years old, uh, looking somewhat disheveled and distinctly undernourished, approaches your table. Excuse me, sirs, milady. My master bids me summon you. If you would, please. There are masters in this town. And the adventure begins. I guess. <laughs> Should we really trust this? He's a boy. Who is your master? Fedwin, milady. The sorcerer Fedwin. See? We shouldn't trust it. What could go wrong? Trust it. It's a boy. The situation. You worry me, Horde. I get up and I walk out. How you doing, boy? <laughs> Tell me what he says. We should follow him to make sure he doesn't kill himself. I kind of would prefer that. <laughs> I'm happy go lucky following the boy. Let's go. The boy looks back over his shoulder. Like Igor? <sighs> he is limping. This is every single town we go to. At some point, I'll nail down an accent I want for him, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the boy's too slow. I pick him up, put him on his shoulder. Point me in the direction. Over that hill, Master. Just a little bit further. There we go. I'll go up and pay the tavern. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> Your meal is expensive. Two it's silver you a bowl. Complained. Two silver. Fine. Next time, don't complain. What is that? Half a gold. Two silver. No, oh, two silver a bowl. There's four of us. Oh. That'd be eight. That's yeah. It's almost half. That's two silver left out of one gold piece. Right, because it's ten silver for each gold. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Ten silver for gold. Yes. Oh, they said two gold. Don't worry about it. Let's continue. <laughs> All I know is I don't care. I'm not paying for it. The boy leads you to a small two-story building that's old and in disrepair on a hilltop overlooking the streets of the town. Um, there's cold air coming in through holes in the thatchwork of the ceiling and light streams through gaps where parts of the wall have crumbled away. In general, this is a building that has seen many, many better days. The interior is heaped with tomes and scrolls and odd bits and bobs. There are beakers and vials 
and bits of animals, strangely shaped skulls, horns, um, you name it, there are all manner of things scattered about in heaps and piles in this hovel of a house. This is the part where a dingy man steps up with a crossbow and says, Give me all your valuables. <laughs> did you? Did we change DMs? <laughs> <laughs> that was in character. <laughs> if I ever meet a sorcerer who has any sort of decor sense, I will just lose my mind. Don't touch anything. <laughs> As I'm like leaning over to touch like a thing of skulls. Smack his head. Ah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing happened. I mean, none of these books are even alphabetized. Terrible. I'm gonna get my mall ready. Oh, for the love of God! What is it? What is he doing? Please, masters, just just a little bit further. He's through here. See, the boy seems trustworthy. So did I. <laughs> no. I like the no. way you think, Cord. <laughs> <laughs> so we, I follow the directions of the boy. I suppose. Wait, what's this boy's name? I'm kind of tired of calling him boy. You hadn't asked. <laughs> okay, what's your name? Gim, sir. Let's right. stick with boy. He said his name was Gimp. <laughs> <laughs> you were a terrible Was person. it an ironic name? Did you have it before or after? Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> Never mind, carry on. Alright, <laughs> Gimp. Gim. Gim. Oh. I'm calling him Gimp. <laughs> Pick on the Sorcerer's Apprentice. See where that gets you. <laughs> We're shortly going to have a pink half-orc. <laughs> <laughs> Won't look any less ridiculous. <laughs> You're led into the back room of this house. And... Immediately you can smell that thick, cloying, overly sweet scent of somebody who is in seriously poor health. Um, The sorcerer that you have been brought to is laid out in dirty, disheveled bedding that looks like it hasn't been changed in quite some time, nor has the sorcerer left his bed in days. Um, The pungent aroma of whatever affliction this man suffers is near enough to make you gag, and everyone please make a constitution saving throw, DC 12, to avoid hurling. Oh jeez. So I'm kind of liking the finer things. Can I take a disadvantage here? <laughs> <laughs> I, I will let you choose to take disadvantage on that roll if you'd like. Sure, I go ahead. Fits. So how does a constitution wow. roll work? Versus... So it's a constitution saving throw. Okay. Okay. So if you are proficient in constitution saves, you add your proficiency bonus in addition to your constitution bonus to your saving throw. If you are not proficient in constitution saves, you just add your constitution modifier to what you roll. Okay, I got a 17 then. 15. 21. I leave the room very quickly. (laughs) (laughs) Aren't you a cleric? (laughs) Shouldn't you be used to this? I'm not that kind of cleric. That might be a line she'll be saying many times throughout this campaign. (laughs) But he needs healing! He could be put out of his mercy. Put out of his mercy? No. (laughs) <laughs> Horde, why don't you go check on Ellie for a little bit? Please. She might need some help. Come closer. After you wreck her? I come closer. I hang by the door. <laughs> Elves. Well, half. Been a very long time since I have seen elves. There was just a couple outside. No? We didn't see any elves. Eh, I could have just made that up. Eh, whatever. All right. No, oh, another DM. Never trust an actor. <laughs> <laughs> it is good that you received my message. <laughs> yes. Yes. Message. I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, oh. The time is close. I am sorry. But I will not be able to complete the journey. You will need to take the spheres with you. 
about me. Remind me where we're supposed to take the spears. Subtle as always. And the boy comes to him. Do you see him whisper in the boy's ear? And the boy darts off to start tossing things aside and digging out a chest. Hmm. I wonder how many other chests are hidden around here. Dude, I just whispered it. Too soon. <laughs> How's Ellie doing? <laughs> I imagine they're probably sick on the floor. <laughs> well, it might improve the decor. <sighs> and the boy comes back with a bulging sack. You can hear faint glass tinkling from within the bulging sack. I'm going to be broken in five minutes. That long? <laughs> I'll walk up to the, uh, the sorcerer. Hey, you wild mage. <laughs> Aww. And what are these? They will need to be placed at the tops of the standing stones to light the path back. To where? To the beginning. No man living will ever slay a charge. No hero is mighty enough. No army powerful enough to save us. I have clung to life. Big crystal balls. Clear, or do they have something in them? Um, they're misty uh, and jewel faceted. So they're not like it looks like a blown glass ball. More like it's some kind of carved crystal, and there's something smoky within its depths. Hmm. So. Are you perchance saying that if we follow through with this, that Jarjuk himself will be slain? It is not possible to slay the beast as strong as he is. But I have delved into ancient past and found the truth of his origin. Oh, and what is that? Dragon's egg, thought, cast of stone, was given to the king's heir. That egg hatched a Jarjuk in the royal vaults beneath the city. There he grew to power, feeding on unnatural and unholy magic. You will destroy the egg, and a jar joke's rise of terror will never happen. Will never happen? Hmm. The crystals mean time travel. This sounds like fun. All right, I'm in. See? Adventure! Yes, <laughs> yes. You've got to be saying that just because those things are pretty. <laughs> Interesting. What well, really? so where does this path begin? <laughs> 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 maps. A large stack of parchments is placed in front of you. Well, at least you knew where those were immediately. 
be. Is there like a cliff note version? Closer. Oh no. Can I come closer? Make me a constitution saving throw DC 13. The smell is a bit much. Uh, I got a 14. It's <laughs> 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 in the morning. Bathing <laughs> isn't the only thing he hasn't left bed for. That uh, sounds like Horde. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why you don't have to wear armor. Nobody wants to get close. <laughs> Consider it our sacred duty to help out wherever we can, to defeat dragons, to take hordes, whatever it takes. We are here. Hordes, right? Shh. You're here for the money. Shh. <laughs> well, where might Jar Jar be at the moment? I don't suppose you have any idea about that. We'll be under the keep. The path will take you back. You must get there without him seeing you. You must <laughs> reach the standing stones. Beware his minions and his. Oh, for the love of God! Why does this always happen? You can handle this yourself, can't you? <laughs> I suppose. I hear West is good this time of year. <laughs> I've heard good things about South, but here we are nonetheless. And we have an adventure, so I say we go on it. Besides, a dragon no one else can beat? I think we got this. I'm going to remind you of that later. Good. <laughs> I'm going to go fill her in on what happened. <laughs> you there, boy. So, sorry about your master. Uh, what do you want to do with him? He left instructions, my lords. I'll be setting fire to the place. Oh, like now, or do you mind if we, like, uh, He yeah. said very clearly that the things here should not fall in the hands of people who would not be able to handle the mysteries. And that if you are successful, it wouldn't matter anyway. So I can make a persuasion check to make me maybe give us a little time to make sure there are not any hidden tools that might help us on our quest. <laughs> I do have proficiency in persuasion. You can go ahead and make a persuasion check. DC 30. Oh, it was on 19, but now it's a 3. So that would be a nine. That would be not very persuasive. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> like, uh, I'll see you guys. Would you be cooked, please? <laughs> I was like, eh, no. And Blue <laughs> witch fire begins to spread from the mage's bed. Oh, like, immediately, immediately. You should leave, masters. The boy bolts. I think uh, we should follow him. I will pick up all the parchments and just run my way out, the ones he gave us. 
and the bobbles. <laughs> well, time to go. <laughs> time to follow the kid. <laughs> now you want to follow the kid. He's going to the way just fire. get to see the boy and then us. <laughs> yeah. Bye. <laughs> time to go, El. <laughs> Hoard, are you coming? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you guys collectively, as a group, get out of the house before it goes up in brilliant blue mage fire. So he's told me that it's quite, and my reaction is pretty much, but wait a moment, if we stop the rise of the dragon, then there will be no reason for us to go back and stop the rise of the dragon. So he'll rise, but then we'll have to go back to stop it. Don't think about it too much. <laughs> what if we don't, and then we can have a pet dragon? Do you really think you could control whatever power that thing? I'm sorry, I'm very lost here. Are we talking about time travel? It sure seems like it. He said. I assumed we were just fighting an egg. That seemed a lot easier. We're also, fighting an egg? Like something we don't know what it's called because the old fart died. The old fart. He burned his place. To boy, boy, where's that boy? Long gone. Go on. Ah, we better not get blamed for this. I saw nothing. <laughs> Let's go back to town. Let's find us somewhere to stay for the evening, and I'm going to look over these maps. I was under the impression we were Do you need to roll persuasion? Out. Yes, I do. Okay, that's going to be opposed. 